my experience of doing business in Africa has been about working with amazing women. It's about sisterhood. It's about sharing and caring. It's about lifting each other up when things are not going well. It's about Ubuntu, that humanity for others. It's that almost gotcha feeling that we get. I think it's magical. So a lot of people will say, well, it's not unique to Africa, but it's Africa that we're talking about. And I think there are elements of it that are very much about Africa. Women on this continent have been gathering to do business since time. We've been getting together to share ideas, and we've almost been hustling to make sure that we're looking after our children and meet, making ends meet. These days, women are meeting and gathering with a new intent to do business. We're no longer happy to start small businesses and have our businesses stay small. We really want to make sure that we make an impact on this continent that is ours too. So I attend a monthly women's meeting. I'm very honored to be included in this gathering of businesswomen. These are businesswomen that are turning over multi-million rands per year. Some of them are turning over multi-million dollar worth of businesses. They gather with an intent to support each other. So these meetings, I actually put together under the slogan, Moving Further Together. The meeting starts with the women sharing around the table. They talk about business, personal, as well as family. It's a holistic approach to looking at you and how you run your business. The women share their successes and their challenges and we look at new opportunities. At one of these meetings, I did my share, and as part of my share, I also talked about a business opportunity that had happened. Me and two other women business owners had come together, and we'd started a business. So we hadn't just talked about starting the business, we'd actually done the strategy. We'd done the inevitable WhatsApp group to actually make sure that we're talking on a regular basis. And we'd registered the business. So I talked about the business opportunity. The opportunity actually came out of being in matchmaking meetings with corporates. And we'd heard the corporates on one side talk about the challenges they had about meeting business owners. And we had the women business owners on the other side talking about the challenges they had. And we decided there's a business opportunity in this. So we put together a business. Anyway, I shared this with the group, and the meeting went on. A few weeks later, I was in my office, juggling meetings and reports as we do, and my phone rang. I answered the phone. It was from one of the ladies from, from the group. Uh, she hadn't called me before, even though we knew each other from the group and we'd met in the group. I'd never received a call from her before. So we talked once the pleasantries were done. She told me that she had some money to invest in our business app. I was actually quite emotional and surprised. This was really about sisterhood, not only about somebody listening to you and saying, this is a great idea, but she then said, OK, here's some funding. This is a really great idea. Move ahead with it. For me, that's part of the narrative of the sisterhood that we have in Africa. We're not just saying, I support you, but we do the physical support that often goes with it. So after the paperwork was drawn and the the money was then deposited into the account. 
we decided that we would employ a woman business owner, an IT expert, to actually develop the app. So therefore, almost completing the circle of sisterhood in business. And I don't think this story is rare. I think there's a lot of this happening. And I'm seeing it more and more, that women, we're not just getting together anymore to just talk and be nice, but we're actually talking business. I can give you quite a few more examples of the sisterhood that, that's happening around us. So we talked about women gathering. Uh, I also sit on the board of an organization that trains on entrepreneurship. The organization is a global organization. I sit on the Africa board, and they teach financial literacy and entrepreneurship and work readiness to youth. Actually teaching youth in work to look at the entrepreneurial ideas around them in their environments and putting them into projects. And in a safe environment, being able to develop those projects. Each year, we have a Company of the Year awards for this. And what we're finding is that more and more girls are coming through in these teams. In 2016, of all the teams that came through from the 16 countries representing Africa, 76% of the teams were girls. And these girls are articulate. They're savvy. They're coming through with really smart ideas. I think we need to know this as women entrepreneurs and as adults, because these are the entrepreneurs that we're going to be handing the baton over to. And some of these projects are really amazing. So one of the most memorable projects for me in 2016 was another girl team. They had actually come up with a tea that, had been, that they'd beautifully packaged um, and beautifully branded. And the tea helps with menstruation pain. When I asked the girls how they came up with this idea, one of the girls said her grandmother had told her about this leaf that they used to pull out in the village where she lives, crush it, and then put hot water in, and then they would drink it, and it helped with menstruation pain. That's indigenous knowledge meeting entrepreneurship learning. Looking back a little bit, I used to work at the CSIR, and one of my favorite projects at the CSIR was when we worked on IKS knowledge, indigenous, indigenous knowledge systems. The IKS practitioners were predominantly females. I was amazed at how they came together. They didn't talk about Ubuntu. They practiced it in everything they did. Their willingness to share their knowledge and actually allow the Science Institute to take that knowledge and put it into modern-day science was amazing to me. What it taught me was that we had this amazing knowledge on this continent. We could bring it into modern-day times, and it provided the key to our prosperity. And often we don't realize how much it does that. And all of us have been given some of these keys to knowledge, often by parents. My mother and grandmother were very entrepreneurial. Even from the way they taught us how to work in the kitchen and cook amazing meals, or the way they helped us to make our homes places of absolute nurturing. And of course, the knowledge they passed on in how we raised our children is amazing. And I think a lot of that information is knowledge we need to think about when we're doing business. A lot of it is solutions to today's issues and today's problems that we need to look at. So I also am involved with an organization that identifies, registers, and certifies women-owned businesses. We help these women to meet the marketplace, corporate members. The idea of the meetings is not just to get together and talk, but to actually make sure that these women can sell to the corporates. 
The businesses that register with us are small, medium, and large. They have opportunities to actually sit and have matchmaking meetings with the corporates. So for those who certify their businesses, and we've got currently got 55 companies that have certified their businesses from the database of 700 companies, the 55 have an opportunity four times a year to have matchmaking sessions with the corporates. In these matchmaking sessions, they actually have an option, an opportunity, to not only sell their business to the corporates, but more importantly, to listen to the opportunities, listen to the challenges that the corporates are having. And that allows them to go away again and innovate. This has been very successful, and we've learned a lot from these. So one of the things that's been happening with this group of women is that they're becoming a community. They're mentoring and coaching each other. And more than that, they're actually buying from each other. Products and professional services. So we're having an inner circle of people that realize that they can work together and help each other to do well in business. Beyond this, these women are collaborating naturally. I have a number of examples of some of the collaboration that's actually going on within the network, and there's too many of them to me to give you a lot of them, so I just want to give you a sample of some of the collaboration that's going on. So, for example, we have a company that does strategy and processes that's partnered with a legal firm, and they actually do running workshops to help businesses to understand the new Information Protection Act. We've got another company that does facilities management, a very large facilities management company, that's partnering with a company that does manufacturing of products, cleaning products. And they've realized that working together, they can actually approach clients and be in a bit better position to negotiate larger contracts. We've got two ladies that met at one of our matchmaking sessions, both in service, health, services tradition, health services. The next day, they put together a proposal to supply health services to one of the clients. It's those opportunities where they get together, and instead of seeing each other as competition, they see that collaboration opens up new opportunities and new doors to move forward. We have another two companies, both in security management, both in different cities, doing very well in two cities. They came together at the matchmaking session and decided that they would collaborate to grow their businesses beyond the borders. So collaboration is working for all of us. But what these women are doing, they're also reducing risk. They're working together on their terms, testing the market, testing how they can actually work together and looking at new opportunities. What we know for sure is that the corporates out there want to do business with companies that can take on larger and larger contracts. And in most cases, the women business owners tend to be either solopreneurs or SMEs. What we're finding is by linking in with the women who are doing well in creating much larger companies, we can actually bring these companies together to form stronger partnerships. So we know for certain that the global economy is worth about $86 trillion. Of that $86 trillion, apparently women impact about $20 trillion in spend. Yet, we only get 1% of consumer purchasing from the large corporates and government. And it's not because women are not creating businesses. Up to 39% of the world's small businesses, privately owned businesses, are women owned. So we're there, we're creating businesses, we're doing our best to scale our businesses, but yet we're not getting the larger and larger contracts. 
So, we talked about collaboration, we've talked about sisterhood, we've talked about how women are coming together to do more. We want to make sure that women get together to get a larger slice of that cake, that $86 trillion cake that's out there. We know for certain that it's been shared by the male businesses, and we get the crumbs, and often we're left to fight over the crumbs. But what we need to do is to be more aware that there are opportunities out there where we can actually create new businesses. I think women should be looking at the opportunities that we have on the whole continent and creating businesses that disrupt, looking at the opportunities that we have. We have so many problems on the continent, and we can find some of the solutions to those problems. So how do we do that? we basically make sure that we use the magic in our sisterhood. We keep collaborating. We keep sharing ideas to make sure that we can all move forward together. Because I really believe that we owe it to the people, and especially the young entrepreneurs that are coming up behind us. Thank you.